Assalamu alaikum. I am Maria Raza from APA 7 Streams. Initiating with the glorious name of Allah Almighty, the Omnipotent, the Omnipresent. The topics that we are going to discuss in today's lesson are Foreign Policy of Pakistan, Pakistan's relation with neighboring countries, Pakistan is a member of international global organizations, economic development of Pakistan, and Pakistan on the road to progress. Dear listeners, by the end of today's lesson, you will be able to understand the aims and objectives of foreign policy of Pakistan and secondly, perceive the international organizations that gave membership to Pakistan. As a part of recapitulation, since today is the last week of OSP round 2, altogether in 6 weeks we have been discussing these topics like South Asia from colony to empire. We have discussed education, economic and modernization plans of British, constitutional reforms in United India and the constitutional development in Pakistan, for instance, 1861 in United India, 1892, 1909 and 1919. Own words in the form of we have discussed Constitution 1956, 1962, and 1973. We have also discussed educational institutions as a case in point, Mohammedan Anglo-Oriental College by Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan. Um, by and large, we discussed um, Darul Alum Dewand and Nadwat al Ulama, own words, political parties like uh, Indian National Congress and All India Muslim League. Partition of Bengal, Khilafat movement, governance, the government system in Pakistan, system of government plus the organs of federal government in Pakistan. And lastly, we discussed in the previous topic, political changes in Pakistan. So all these topics which I mentioned, these topics uh, were the part of the previous, six, uh, previous five lessons of the OSP round two. And uh, by this time, it's about time you send your assignments. Since on the basis of your assignments, you will be assessed for the case of promotion to the next class. So I reiterate, still you are having time to submit your assignment. Altogether, six weeks assignment. Now formally coming to the outset of today's topic, foreign policy of Pakistan. Actually, what is foreign policy? For instance, when Pakistan interacts with another country. It could be on the basis of trade, like import and export, for foreign affairs, for defense, etc. So Pakistan sets some policies, some strategies in order to deal with the foreign countries. That policy of Pakistan is called its foreign policy. We can define it in a way, general plan and policy of one country concerning its relations with other countries. This is called foreign policy. Now, what are the objectives, aims and objectives of Pakistan's foreign policy? Like Pakistan sets a foreign policy in order to have friendly relation with all the nations of the world. Secondly, to have sound relation with the Muslim countries. Then Pakistan wants to have uh, um, regional cooperation in the region, in the Asia. Then Pakistan needs to cooperate, coordinate with the members of the United Nations and other international agencies for maintaining peace. Now Pakistan's relation with the neighboring countries uh, before formally discussing the topic. First of all, I want my dear listeners to put a glance on this map. Afghanistan, the neighboring countries of Pakistan, then China in the north, India is present, then Iran. Now, we will discuss every country one by one. The first one is Pakistan-Afghanistan relation. The location of Afghanistan is on the northwest of Pakistan. The boundary line, the border line between Pakistan and Afghanistan was demarcated in 1893 by the British by Mortimer Durant. And that boundary line is called Durant Line. Afghanistan is having ill attitude with Pakistan because Afghanistan was the country that did not accept Pakistan's creation on the map. 
as an independent state. Even Afghanistan voted against the membership of Pakistan in United Nation. When Pakistan became the 56th member of United Nation on 30th September 1947, Afghanistan was the first country that rejected the inclusion of Pakistan in the United Nations. Regarding the geostrategical importance of Pakistan, it is very much significant, integral for Afghanistan since Afghanistan is the landlocked country having no access to sea, to sea route. So on the basis of foreign policy, Pakistan on the basis of its foreign policy provides transit route to Afghanistan. Secondly, Pakistan-China relationship. China lies in the north of Pakistan. 1949, 1st October 1949, China got independence. And Pakistan was the first country in 1950 to recognize China as an independent state. So we can sum up uh, the relationship of Pakistan and China is a very welcoming relationship between the two countries. And 1965 in the war of Pakistan and India, China's provision was of full support to Pakistan. Whereas in 1971, China supported Pakistan clandestinely with a purpose because on the opposite side with the support of India, Russia was standing. So in the post-war, we can say that China provided economic aid to Pakistan that helped Pakistan rebuild its economy. 1972, there was a visit of Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto to China. 1978, the new era of friendship between Pakistan and China started. How? By the inauguration of Karakuram Highway. Then next point is Sendak project. Sendak is the name of place and it is present in Balochistan. Huge deposits of copper lies here in this place, but due to scarcity of resources and absence of technical um, assistance, technical know-how, Pakistan was unable to make use of its large copper deposits. And finally, it was done with the assistance of China. And lastly, the most important of all, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. And you all are familiar with the name CPEC. The third one, Pakistan-India relation. Location, India is in the east of Pakistan. After the Red Cliff Award was announced, initially, Ferozpur, Fazlika, Gurdaspur. These areas were um, demarcated as part of Pakistan. But after some incidences, some mutual uh, conclave, Gurdaspur, Ferozpur, Fazlika, these areas came in the share of, came as the boundary, came as the areas of India. Gurdaspur, you can see the highlighted part, the red part on the map. This is Gurdaspur. If Gurdaspur was not given to India, so from the beginning till today, there couldn't be interminable war between Pakistan and India over Kashmir, since Gurdaspur is the gateway to Kashmir. So giving of Gurdaspur to India means welcoming Indians to Kashmir by the help of Gurdaspur. 1965, there happened 17 days war between Pakistan and India. 1971, Pakistan lost its east wing and it today that wing is present on the map of the world by the name of Bangladesh and this happened because of the interruption of India. 1987, Ziaul Haq's visit was to India and 1998, Kargil conflict, I'm not going into the depth of this topic since in the previous topics we have already discussed. And the last one, Pakistan-Iran relationship. Iran lies uh, in the southwest of Pakistan. Iran was the first country to recognize Pakistan, to accept Pakistan as an independent state. May 1949, Liaquat Ali Khan visited Iran. And the subsequent year, March 1950, Shah of Iran 
Muhammad Reza Pahlavi visited Pakistan. 1955, there was uh, initiation of CENTO. CENTO means Central Treaty Organization. The founding members were Pakistan, Iran, Turkey, and Iraq. After the exclusion of Iraq from this, so the, the name was CENTO. Initially, it was Baghdad picked, but when Iraq was withdrawn from um, Cent Baghdad pick. Then in 1959, the name became Cento and it continued till 1979 because of the Iranian revolution and some other uh, steps, strategies taken in that uh, decades. It dissolved in 1979 finally. 1964, there was the um, inauguration of another project by the name of Regional Cooperation for Development and the founding members the members were Pakistan, Iran and Turkey. Finally this RCD got its name changed in 1985 under the title of ECO Economic Cooperation Organization. Now the next topic is Pakistan is a member of international global organizations is a part of your book we are today we are going to discuss the four organizations the first one united nations organization uno the flock of flake is pasted here organization of islamic cooperation oic the picture of holy kaaba it is relevant to organization of islamic cooperation and sark the orange one, South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation, and lastly, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, SCO. Now, different wings, different organs, different parts of United Nations is General Assembly, Security Council, Economic and Social Council, Trusteeship Council, International Court of Justice, the Secretariat. So these wings are supposed to do some specific uh, activities. And now formally, the details of all this organization, United Nations Organization. The headquarter is present in uh, New York. And Pakistan became the 56th member of United Nations on 30th September 1947. It was established United Nations organizations. Uh, it was established in 1945. Currently, the member countries are 194. The purpose of United Nations is to bring peace, to prevent conflict, and to strengthen the security. Second organization is OIC. OIC, the previous name was Organization of Islamic Conference. Later on, it was changed into Organization of Islamic Cooperation. The headquarter is in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. It was established in 1969. What was the background behind its establishment? That some rebel rulers, some um, anti-Islamic forces set Masjid al-Aqsa. Masjid al-Aqsa is the mosque present in Jerusalem. Set that mosque on fire. That was the point that instigated the um, Muslim Ummah to have a platform, to have an organization to protect the uh, Muslims' interests. This was the point when Organization of Islamic Conference came into existence. Currently, with 57 members, with a purpose to protect social values and to promote solidarity, unity amongst the member countries. The next one is SARC. SARC means South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation. The headquarters is present in Kathmandu, that is the capital of Nepal, and it was the idea was uh, initiated in 1980, whereas formally it came into existence in 1985 with the in eight member countries. Now the member countries we can say Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Nepal, Afghanistan, Sri Lanka, and Maldives. And uh, with the purpose, the purpose, the ob aims and objectives of SARC are to strengthen self-reliance, to create self-trust amongst the member countries, that they should be um, worthy enough to trust each other, and set collaboration in economic, technical, cultural, and scientific fields, to create harmony between these eight member countries in terms of economy, uh, technology, 
Culture and Science. Lastly, SCO, Shanghai Corporation Organization. The headquarters is present in Beijing, capital city of China, established in 1996. Initially in 1996, the name was not Shanghai Corporation Organization, rather it was Shanghai Five. Shanghai Five means if with the five founding members. The five founding members were China, Russia, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. In 2001, the name was changed to Shanghai Corporation Organization. Within this period of time, from 2001 till 2010, within some years, Pakistan was the observer state. Observer state means that a country, if it gets the status of observer state, so it means the organization gives that country the benefit of participation regarding the activities of the organization. And finally, in 2010, Pakistan became the member of, member country of, Shanghai Corporation Organization. Eight members and then eight members, the three new members became Pakistan, India and Kyrgyzstan with a purpose to enhance trade and to counteract the emerging challenges. The second last topic, economic development of Pakistan. You can depict you can speculate from the pictures. Pakistan, we can see the land of water resource with the help of the glacier, underground water, rivers, rainfall, etc. Since Pakistan lies in the tropic region, so rainfall is rampant. Secondly, Pakistan, we can see a green well in the form of greenery, in the form of forest. Pakistan is also known as the fruit garden since Balochistan is having the nickname of fruit garden of Pakistan so fruit is its specialty besides Pakistan is um, eminent in terms of the mineral like gold silver precious gems copper gypsum marble etc now there's a question that if Pakistan is the land of resources Pakistan is the land of opportunities. Still, Pakistan, still, why not this is feasible for Pakistan to entitle itself among the developed countries of the world? The answer we will give in the next slide. Pakistan is not successful enough to term itself as the developed nation in the world because of some economic weaknesses, like weak political setup, because of the political instability. The most famous example we can say that in the starting of period of the starting decade of the nascent state when Pakistan got independence, 56, 1956 and 1957, within two years, Pakistan experienced the change of four prime ministers. This is called political instability. Secondly, deficit and balance of payment. Balance of payment is the record of all countries goods and services so balance of payment means the record of import and export pakistan continuously experiences deficit in its balance of payment deficit is something negative term how balance of payment of pakistan is negative because the import of pakistan is more than the export of pakistan energy crisis low investment, ineffective planning of the lawmakers, of the leaders, lack of priorities, poverty, and above all, poor law and order situation. That poor law and order situation is the situation that doesn't allow the investment. And the last topic, still like looking towards the sunny side of the picture, we can say, Pakistan on the road to progress. First, before going to this topic, I want to define infrastructure. Since we are going to discuss in the subsequent slide, so infrastructure means the basic physical and structural facilities. We can say roads, airports, ports, utilities, energy, 
railways, telephone, education, healthcare, social, all these aspects that provide either physical facility or structural facility. All these facilities come under the category of infrastructure. How Pakistan is on the road to progress? The most integral part that we are going to discuss here is CPIC, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. This project was started by China in 2013 with the investment of $46 billion in the start. Now almost at this point of time that $46 billion is worth 62. It means the worth is equal to 62 billion dollars and the CPEC is the infrastructural project by China. It can boost up energy production in Pakistan. It can um, give way to special economic zones. Special economic zones we can say the area where the industrialists, where the initiators are given incentive in terms of taxation etc. This CPEC project of China can boost up employment opportunities for Pakistanis since it has increased the investment. So finally, we can say that with the increased investment of Chinese in Pakistan, the infrastructure of Pakistan is going to be on the pinnacle. As a part of assignment, these are the questions. Dear listeners, once again, I reiterate I give you a reminder, still you are having time to submit your assignments since you will be assessed on the basis of your assignments. Justify the statement, Pakistan and China enjoyed friendly relation over a long period of time. The ancient objectives of OIC, note on Pakistan's infrastructural development and the role of Pakistan in the development of Pak-Afghan relation, the organs of United Nations, and the significance and impact of CPEC for the development of Pakistan plus the vocabulary um, accompanying from page 102 to 107. Wish you best of luck. Thank you.